Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth Morning Show. I'm your host, Alice Anchor Star, and today we'll be talking about the latest market sell-off, the Federal Reserve rate hike plan, and the latest on Social Security. But before we begin, as a reminder, this is a financial education presentation and should not be construed as personal financial advice. Full disclaimer information is available at anchorstarwealth.com. Good morning, Steve. The stock market futures are in the green this morning after three straight days of selling. What's your take on what happens in the market this week? Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, Thanks for that intro, Allison. And it's been uh, three days, took three days off from the morning brief. Uh, Part of that was due to the uh, busy schedule with volleyball for our youngest and the fact that uh, Candace, uh, which many of you know is our office manager, has been uh, out of the office helping her daughter move into into college. So been a little bit on uh, thin staffing here lately this past few days. And coincidentally, the last three days have also been a big sell-off, so the phone's ringing off the hook. So I'm very happy to be back to normal uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, but thanks for your patience. Thanks for all of you that reached out and said, hey, where's the where's the brief? What's wrong? Is anything going on? Nope. Sometimes just get a little too busy to even squeeze off a 10-minute briefing uh, to give you an idea how busy we are. But th- things are going great, and thank you for asking. All right, the question is, three straight days of sell-off, is it going to end Uh, You know, all you hear in the mainstream media is the world is ending and that that really it's never going to end. Everything's going to continue to sell off. Well, that's not true. You know that Uh, you followed me long enough. You know that if you have three days up or down, it tends to reverse on the, the, you know, that following day. And that's what we're seeing this morning. So, so far. The, uh, the stock market futures, we'll go to the main page here, uh, are in the green, not super high into the green, but are in the green at least a little bit. And then when you click on to like the NASDAQ to kind of get a bigger picture of where we are, uh, there's the one year chart, which is a little more telling than the six months. So, you know, the beginning of the year, drop, 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 had a little uh, bounce in in April time frame, drop, drop, drop through June. July was up actually 8%. Uh, overall from July and then from uh, mid-August on, it's been pretty much continually selling. Uh, do we make new lows? No, I don't really see us going down here all the way to uh, that level, but certainly we're back into the buy zone again, right? So uh, for the for those that, uh, you know, hear the bathtub analogy, I thought this was the bathtub in here. Uh, we're back into the bathtub, if you, if you will, if you want to use that analogy. Uh, so yeah, you can put new money to work here. Uh, prices are attractive again. Um, you know, we can pull up uh, maybe tomorrow. If today's another red day, we'll pull up uh, some indicators tomorrow to show you how oversold the market is. Um, but if you're looking for an entry point to get back into technology, certainly this is it. You know, Apple, if if you follow the Apple, it was above 170, back, back below 160 now. Um, so lots of things are becoming more attractive during the sell-off. I think today the green will hold. Uh, the market's really been moving off of no headlines. I mean, there, there's really nothing changing uh, out there. So, uh, you know, just just emotion and uncertainty is, is what's driving the market right now. Next, economists are concerned that the Federal Reserve will raise rates too much and trigger a recession. What's your take? Well, whenever you have... Uh, the Federal Reserve getting actively involved with either raising rates or cutting rates, everybody becomes an expert, right? It's kind of like how uh, everybody was a social media expert on, uh, you know, COVID when it came out. And, you know, it's kind of just the latest hot topic to talk about. Uh, But here, I'll give you my take. And, you know, it's just one person's opinion uh, out there with others. But the Federal Reserve obviously is trying to tread a narrow course, if you will, uh, from raising the amount just right, the Goldilocks raises where it's just just the right amount. Uh, but you know we have inflation out there; it's raging out of control, or at least was. Hopefully, it's starting to become more under control, and we've seen some signs of that. Uh, but really, we're a far cry from getting it back down to what we consider normal—that two to three percent uh, range. So the Federal Reserve has a tough task, and it actually may be impossible. It may be one of those: if they undershoot it, then you know they're going to be wrong either way sort of thing. Um, And in that case, I think that they are going to actually uh, continue with their rate hikes. If you remember this three days of selling started Friday morning with Chairman Powell uh, saying that there's more pain ahead for the foreseeable future. Um, What those are words, those aren't numbers. Uh, Mester here is actually talking numbers, um, you know, that where I think we're at 3.75% right now, but yeah, we'll have a couple more rate hikes this year probably 50 basis points, maybe 75. I bet I think personally think we're done with that, but continue up at least uh, for probably a couple couple of 50 
uh, basis points hike. So it's another percent, if you will, then kind of stabilizing. But I would be surprised if we get through uh, 2023 without cutting some rates, uh, you know, and when you go to cut rates, a lot of us would like to sit back and say, hey, let's do the adult thing and let keep rates higher. Well, the impact of the economy is is going to be a significant headwind. And if, you know, we're already at that second quarter of G, negative GDP, so technically a recession, even though we're still at full employment. So we're kind of in this weird, are we in a recession or aren't we? But the, you know, the important part is that we don't make the recession worse through the, you know, the the cure for the disease. So disease inflation cures raising rates. And then the secondary condition is we throw ourselves into a, a worse recession right now. You know, like the last one I said, you know, best recession ever, uh, if you will, because it's really not too bad yet. But again, that could change. So everybody's got an opinion on the issue. Personally, I think the the, the Fed does actually continue to raise rates. Um don't forget though that the market at the end of the rate raising cycle rate the rising rate cycle excuse me uh the market celebrates that when it's near so that's when the market takes off so you wait if you wait till the actual uh rate hikes to stop you're going to miss that initial you know 10 to 15 point move in the market so good question allison and it's what we'll be talking about more more and more uh through the rest of the year Last, Social Security benefits are scheduled to be reduced in 2035. Do you think this will be a hot button issue for the midterm elections? Well, so here's kind of the article that's out on it. So 13 years from now, I'm looking for the exact uh, paragraph to where it says, OK, so Social Security can pay full benefits for 13 years, at which point 80 percent of benefits will be payable. So a lot of people are asking, what's the plan? Does it go away? No, it goes to 80 percent. Right. But imagine if you will that you're in retirement. And again, I, fo I help folks with this every day where they, you know, how much money do you have coming in the door? And if they have pensions, you kind of figure those first. A lot of people don't have those. Uh, then secondly, you talk about his or her social security or whatever the couple lay down need is. And so you have two, two pensions, potentially two social securities, potentially if it's a married couple. And then lastly, what do I need to take out of my investment accounts, whether it's retirement accounts or taxable to live off of? That becomes your base income in retirement because you're not working anymore. So imagine if these planning factors that you have start getting reduced. Um, well, then that means you're going to have to take more money out of the investment accounts, which changes an assumption. And then you have to reflow, you know, how long, my, how long is my money going to last uh, calculations. So it's a big deal if Social Security would move down. Now, you know, what's working against it? Well, we have cost of living adjustments, which are a good thing uh, that keep pace with inflation. It'll be announced here in about a month. Generally, the early October is when they announce it for 23. That's probably going to be high 8%, maybe even into low 9%. So again, making the problem worse as far as how, how long does the pot of money uh, that's in Social Security actually last. So something will have to be done is the punchline here. So is it going to be a hot button issue was the, kind of the question for the election. Uh, I, you know, as a financial guy, I'm like, absolutely, it should be, it should be number one, right? Because we need to do something to fix it. Whether we slide dates to the right, we collect more, we increase the wage salary, you know, something needs to be done. But I don't know that the politicians that are out there are going to want to duke this one out over the uh, midterms. They may save it for the general election, in other words. So uh, the jury's out, but we shall see. You know, I would love for it to see a front burner issue because I would like, you know, you know less uh, uncertainty out there or, or more certainty, I guess, is a better way to say that uh, for our retired folks out there. Um, but at some point, this is going to have to be addressed. And of course, the sooner you address the problem, then the less draconian the measures that, you know, the changes that need to be made will, you know, will be smaller. Um, so while I would like to see it as a front burner issue for this election overall, I, I think it will probably slide a, at least a few more years before we're adult enough to tackle the problem. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Please submit your questions as a comment through social media or directly to our email at VIP services at anchorstarwell.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to get daily updates. That's all we have for today's show. I'm Allison Anchorstar, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.